welcome back to another Geek Watt video and today we're going to be looking at this. This is the Asus Vivo PC. It's a really, really small computer and there's a really uh, cool use case that I'm going to be jumping into in this video uh, which I think will interest 90% of my audience. So smash that like button and let's get straight into it. So as you saw from the title, I'm going to be talking about game streaming and why a PC this small is really, really great for that. But first, let's take a quick look at this PC and see what makes it such a good candidate for Steam's in-home game streaming. Now, this PC is super small and runs Windows 10. Uh, running Windows 10 is great because not only is this PC going to be good for game streaming, you can also use it as a standalone computer. In many offices, call centers, for example, uh, they use PCs like this because uh, they're cheap, they're inexpensive, they come for around £200 here in the UK. And you can get them for as cheap as $200 as well over in the US of A. Uh, now, if you take a look around this PC, it's got some really, really good display outputs and it's got really, really good I.O. that's going to work it greatly in our favour for in-home game streaming. Now first of all is the USB port. So this has got four USB 3 ports and whilst the speed of these isn't too key, you want to make sure you've got more than two where possible. You need to plug in a keyboard and a mouse of course to play your games, but then you might want to install a thumb drive for different applications, you might want to plug in a games controller as well. So from that perspective, four USB 3 ports is a great addition. Now this PC also supports 4K Ultra HD outputs over its HDMI port. Now that not only means uh, you can stream 4K gaming as well in the future, if your hefty gaming PC can cope with it, it also allows you to do higher frame rate at full HD 1080p. Now in terms of display outputs, this has got a VGA output for more your kind of older style vintage monitors. Uh, I can definitely understand why they would put a VGA port on this. You've got to think of all the offices out there that are using PCs like this and older monitors. HDMI is of course what you and me are going to be using them uh, for game streaming. It's also a very, very low power unit. It's not going to kick out much heat. It's got a little fan in there, but it's pretty quiet even at 100% load. It's not going to disrupt your game experience or whatever else you happen to be doing on this computer. The second most important thing that this has on aside from its display outputs is the Ethernet port. Without an Ethernet port, this thing is rendered useless for game streaming. Not that you can't stream over Wi Fi, you can, and my tests in a moment will show that. However, the experience frankly isn't very good. Uh, you want to maintain a wired connection wherever possible and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment's time. Uh, this thing also has uh, audio output if you didn't want to use audio over HDMI, a uh, combo microphone uh, headphone port which is great as well say you're streaming your games to your living room and you don't want everyone to hear them you can plug headphones in, another great feature. So overall this is a really really small PC, it's got 2 gig of RAM, it's not got a very powerful CPU, just a uh, quad core Celeron, it's so nothing major but it's going to do the job as you'll see in a moment's time. Before we jump into the test though, what is Steam's in-home streaming, what's it all about and why should it interest you? Now what Steam in-home streaming allows you to do is allows you to get a big, beefy gaming computer that's capable of running games and then a small PC like this one from Asus. Essentially what happens is, is you're essentially mirroring uh, the, the game from one computer to another and then this mini PC or whatever streaming PC you're using is going to send your mouse and keyboard or your Xbox controller signals up to that main PC to perform them. So from a consumer standpoint, all you need to do to get it up and running is install Steam on both computers and then on your gaming PC, you need to make sure the game is installed. If the game's not installed, it's not going to work. Another thing to note is that when you're streaming the game, you're streaming your progress on that PC. So if you're playing GTA and you rank 54, uh, you actually are streaming the game as if you were playing it on the PC where you rank 54. If you die, it's going to affect your rank. If you level up, it's also going to affect your ranks. So it's sort of a a win-win on both sides. Obviously in certain games you can create different profiles to get around this but it's something to note. Now what you do then is you go onto your, the PC that you're streaming uh, to uh, and then you go and select the game in the Steam list. Don't install any games on this mini PC purely because it hasn't got much storage so you don't want to fill it up and also because it's not powerful enough to run any of the games. You don't need to install them, we're only going to stream them. Providing that your main PC is on with Steam open uh, and logged in, both need to be on the same network and both need to be connected to the internet in order to log in with your credentials. Then what you do is you choose the game from the list and click stream and that's it, it's as simple as that. Your main gaming PC will boot the game up into action and your, your streaming PC uh, will mirror that very screen. Then when you're playing your game and you're uh, walking around with WASD for example or using your controller, this PC that you're streaming to is going to send all of that information 
up to your main PC and the idea is it all happens uh, with milli, milli, milliseconds of time uh, so you don't actually notice that you're streaming the game. So why would you want to do this? What are the advantages and disadvantages? If you're the next Optic Nature, you're the next FaZe Clan, uh, you're the next competitive Call of Duty player to storm the world, this isn't for you because it will add latency and will add lag. It will make you 1% worse in CSGO if that really does matter to you. However, a massive advantage is it means you don't need to build multiple gaming PCs for multiple rooms of the house. You can instead just plug shove one of these uh, into another room on the same network and stream games because you can't exactly play two computers at once anyway. Uh, so that's the real advantage is you're going to save a lot of money. A £900 gaming PC versus a £200 mini streaming PC is going to do you a lot, lot better in the bank department. But now let's take a look at the tests. Originally I was going to test it where uh, both PCs, the streaming PC uh, which was receiving the stream and the broadcast PC were on uh, Wi-Fi. However, once I did that, I found the results to be pretty atrocious. If you're going to use Wi-Fi for both of your PCs, uh, then you're really going to see a lot more lag introduced. Yes, if you have a much better router, a very expensive router, you might mitigate some of these issues. But for me, I just wouldn't recommend it. It's not really worth it. The best case scenario is having both PCs plugged into the same gigabit switch uh, where they can basically seamlessly communicate between one another. If that fails, try and plug the Ethernet cables from both PCs into your Wi-Fi router and that's going to work great because what is essentially on the back of your Wi-Fi router is just a switch which is integrated of course into uh, your Wi-Fi router. I did however do another test which worked quite well with the results you'll see in a moment's time uh, where the PC playing the game that's broadcasting the game was on a, a wired Ethernet connection and the receiving PC was on Wi-Fi. Obviously that's going to depend on your, uh, your Wi-Fi setup at home, how far from the router you are, how good your router is and of course how good the Wi-Fi antenna in your streaming PC is as well. But let's first take a look at the results where the streaming PC, the receiving PC is on Wi-Fi and your main PC is on Ethernet. So once again, if you can ignore me messing about and getting in the way, you can see the delay on the slideshow between the image changing. Uh, now this isn't too much of an issue, uh, but you can definitely sort of tell where the latency occurs here. Once again, you see that slight delay with the slideshow. And if we pop now into the game with Franklin, uh, I'm going to leave the house and drive to the airport before taking up a plane uh, to put it through a series of tests. As you see when we get in the car here, you can't really tell of any delay. Aside from when you uh, perhaps shut the door, you could see the difference. Remember, they aren't going to be side by side in a real uh, kind of situation. That radio change there as well allowed us to see what kind of latency and lag is being introduced. This driving situation is one of the best for not feeling any delay. You only use a controller, it's not a major problem. This map does illustrate the lag though. Uh, as you can see where I zoom in, the stream, streaming PC on the left where the game's being broadcast from is much more responsive and you can see that delay. If we now head into the airport with the frankly superb driving skills and head over towards a jumbo jet, this is once again where we'll see that latency is being introduced with the world's best half J-turn donut whatever that was. Uh, if we pop out here, just watch the delay now getting in the plane. I'll play that for you again and you can definitely see there is some more, a bit more lag introduced here. If you then bear with me while I faff about and taxi the plane to God knows where I'm doing, you can once again see the lag when I change the view. Did you see that? That cockpit view uh, was a little bit later on that right hand monitor, more so than when you'll see in a moment on the both wired version. If we now pull up and take off and change the view once again, you can see that delay and it's definitely evident. So as you saw there, you've seen a very sort of respectable result. You are seeing a bit more latency and you can definitely see that as I narrated. When you change your views and you can see when the scene changes massively, how things take a little bit longer. But now let's take a look at where both PCs, best case scenario, are wired next to each other on the same gigabit switch. I'm once again here going to use this slideshow test and you can see the lag is a little bit less. There is definitely a little bit of latency there but it isn't as bad as last time. Once again now if we pop into GTA and get in the car, uh, the lag is indistinguishable, you can't tell the difference really here at all. Once again another scene where you're using a controller, really really good, it feels like you play in the original. 
Once again, my bad driving ends up crashing into the car. I'll call this a control variable uh, and then a bit of a turn around. You can see a slight camera sort of delay on the right hand side. And once again, this map test uh, definitely shows the latency being introduced. In my opinion, isn't as bad as last time uh, where one PC was on Wi-Fi, uh, but still isn't la uh, isn't latency free. Once again, we head up to this plane scene. Slightly different color plane this time, but how many variables jump me to control? Uh, with the worst parking and almost dying for the second time uh, once again watch the delay in which i get into the plane uh, this is much reduced this time but by quite a considerable amount uh, when testing these clothes it's about a third of the latency of the previous test once again changing the view here uh, does show the latency being introduced but isn't quite as much of a problem in my eyes it's very very usable and quite indistinguishable so as you saw from that, you really can't even tell the difference between the two. You are going to see occasional frame rate drops and quality drops and signal drops. Uh, but apart from that, you've seen some really fantastic results. And I, I bet if you didn't tell someone, uh, only 1 in 100 people would notice you were streaming it if you hadn't told them. Only 1 in 100 people would complain and go, well, this feels a little bit unresponsive because it just feels normal it feels like you, you run a you run your actual pc if i can even speak i think for many people it's going to be psychological they're going to feel like well, there's more delay here when the, the actually really isn't there's only a very small not even tangible amount so hopefully you enjoyed this video I thought it was a little bit unique if you did smash that like button and subscribe but as always we'll see you in the next geek up video